Hello friends, this is Sala and you are watching Smart Code. Let's develop a labyrinth game. By developing this game, you are going to learn how to draw a labyrinth and how to work with some important .NET classes like point, cursor, timer and message box. And of course, it will be fun to develop this project. The final version of this game will look like as you see on the screen. When you start the game, your mouse pointer is located here. You have to move your mouse pointer from start to finish without touching the walls within seven seconds, okay? When you reach here within seven seconds, the program will display a message box and will ask for a continue or not. If you choose continue, you can play again. And as you touch any wall, your mouse pointer is sent back to the start position as you can see and timer resets and starts again. You will lose the game if you cannot make it to the finish point in 7 seconds. So we are going to develop this game together. Open a new Windows Form application. Okay, so we are going to adjust some properties of the form. The size of the form would be 800 into 500. You can have different size if you want. And start position, center screen. And I'm removing the title bar. You can have it if you want. So I'm choosing here form border style to none. Okay. Now we are going to mark the boundaries. And for that, so I'm using two different panels. So drag a panel control, okay? And this panel would be the outer panel. We are naming it panel outer. And setting dark property to fill and background color. You can choose a background color. It would be the background color of the boundaries. And now we are dragging another panel and that would be the inner panel. And the back color is white. Okay, so this inner panel would be our game panel and we will draw a labyrinth here using label controls. You can draw your own labyrinth if you want or you can draw the same as I. So let's begin and draw a label control and choose the background color and auto size property will be false. Now we can change the shape of the label and make it look like wall and you can see here. Now we just need to copy and paste and build label end. Okay, now our labyrinth is ready. 
our next step is to define a start location and that would be the top left corner of inner panel how do we get that location for that so we have location property select your inner panel and uh, here you see the location the location is defined by Cartesian coordinates Windows form is basically two-dimensional system and the origin is located at the top left corner of the form. This horizontal measurement from the origin to the right is basically x-axis and vertical measurement from the origin to the bottom is y-axis. So this location is going to be the start position and we are going to define this location into a program and setting the mouse pointer to that location. Just do it here. We need a point variable from a point class, and we are naming it start location. And here we will write start location inner panel dot location, and then we will divert the mouse pointer to that location cursor dot position. So the location property is going to return coordinates x and y and that's why we need a variable of point class to hold these values okay so this is a special class used to define the points once we have recorded the values recorded the location then we are going to divert the mouse pointer to that position and we are writing all this in the form constructor that means as you run the program your mouse position is set to that point let's check it out the mouse is already there let's run again as you run the program the mouse is sent to that location okay this is done but now our walls are not responding as you see now we are going to program the walls as you touch the wall all mouse pointer enters into the wall it will be sent back to that location so we will assign mouse enter event to all the labels we have on the form easiest way to do that just select all the labels go in the event list and here you will find mouse enter event you can change the name labyrinth walls underscore mouse enter and just assign it to the program now a single mouse enter event is assigned to all the labels we have on the form and this is because the behavior of all the labels are exactly the same that is sent back the mouse pointer to the start location so what we are going to write here we are just copying the code and then pasting it here as you touch the wall your mouse pointer is going back to the start location let's run the program and check if the walls working i touch here mouse is back pointer is back as i touch here pointer is sent back to the start location okay so now our walls are working responding as you see this code is repeating itself here and this is not a good programming practice to have code repetition until unless necessary so what we can do here we can write a method and put this code inside the method and then we can call the method everywhere in the program we need it so let's just do it
Okay, so this is much better approach and we have a method now and we are calling the method here and we are calling the method here. Okay, it's good. Now we need to enhance our application. I need two picture boxes, one for start position and one for the finish. Let's have a picture box on the form and place it somewhere very near to the start position, like here. Copy and paste, and that would be the finish line. And then choose image. I have downloaded two images already. I have them in my C drive. Here, a start image. Another image, stop. Okay. And then you need to choose a stretch image size mode and then you can have full image inside the picture box and here we will have a stop and image size okay so now we have start point and stop point we need to place a label here somewhere by showing the timer I think that would be the right place. Adjust some properties. And the last control that we need on the form is the timer control. So the timer control also have a timer, and we can change the properties. Interval would be one second. Okay, uh, this unit is in milliseconds, so one thousand milliseconds is equal to one second. We will enable it from the code, and the name could be. game timer and timer has only one event that is tick so we can start by uh, programming the countdown first so attach the tick event and we need a variable countdown and our countdown starts from seven So we are initializing our variable with 7 in the initialize game method and uh, here we have our timer control we will display the timer in the label and then subtract by 1 after every second but the timer is not enabled and we need to enable the timer as well as we initialize our game and the timer name is game timer start so let's run the program and check the developments so here you see the timer is going well And it goes all the way to minus numbers yeah so now we are going to interrupt the timer and we will write here if countdown is less than zero so that means you have lost and we are going to publish a message box here And play again no. 
message box about done yes or no so user have choice so user can choose yes or no and we are gonna save the result in our dialog result variable user user choice and now we are gonna scan the user choice variable in an if statement user choice is equal to yes then we just need to call the initialize game method and if no then close the application this one is done let's check it out and here you see the timer 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 so you lost you lost you lost you lost uh, we need to stop the timer as well game timer let's stop so message box and the timer is stop if I'm choosing yes, so I can play again. And if I choose no, application closes itself. Okay, so this function is programmed. Now, the last operation we are going to do is to program finish line. As mouse pointer enters into the picture box, you win the game. Okay, so just select the picture box and attach a mouse enter event mouse enter as you enter the first thing we do is stop the game timer and then display a message box Play again, option, and user have two choices, yes or no, and we can save the user response in dialog result variable. And if user choice is, is yes, then we need to initialize the game again. And we need to just call our initialize game method. And if no, means close the application. Now our game is full program. We can give it a final run. At the start, so we have our pointer here. As I touch the wall, pointer is sent back to the start position. As you can see here, when I go all the way down to the finish line, you win. Play again. I'm choosing yes, so I'm able to play again. Okay, it's good. It's working fine. And now close the application. I hope you like the tutorial. Thanks for watching.